thinking about it, I wanted to look at the progression of faith. We talk about when we see the progression of faith, I want us to look at it as how we start out basically in our lives through adult. And behind me is my, my way of thinking in the progression of faith, how I perceive it. So we're going to go through that for just a moment, and I want us to kind of look at a few things. Scriptures this morning from Galatians chapter 4. In Galatians chapter 4, the Word of God says, I mean that the heir, as long as he is a child, is no different from a slave, though he is the owner of everything. But he is under guardians and managers until the day set by his father. In the same way, we also, when we were children, were enslaved to the elementary principles of the world. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, under, born under the law, to redeem those who are under the law so that we might receive adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir through God. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray right now that you'll just preach this message to your people, Father. For those here today and those watching out in the world today, Lord, that you will just speak to their hearts, Lord. You'll touch them in a mindful way, dear Father. You'll move me out of this way and preach your message to God. Lord, I pray that you'll just continue to work through us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So we look at the principle of the progression of faith. And this is just my way of seeing things because when I look at the progression of faith, you think when we were first saved... In our faith, we have what we call a childlike faith. It's innocent. It's pure. You know, it's carefree. It's new. It's fun. And it's safe. Kind of like the training wheels. And then we move on to no training wheels. We become a little bit more scared and nervous, fearful. And eventually we have that feeling of accomplishment. And then we get bold and daring and feel like we know it all until we get aware of the dangers in our life but sometimes we just pass by them by cruising through life you see that's how i perceive progression of faith because we're going to go through each one of these for a little while to understand how they are and each one of these we will see a scripture that will relate to them like it says in Matthew 18, 13, or 18, 3, Truly I say unto you, unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of God. Now, why would Jesus say that to those he's preaching to? Why would he say, become like children? Well, let's think about that for a minute. What are children? You know, here's a few characteristics of that childlike faith. It's innocent. You see, when kids are young, they see the world as a fun place. They doesn't see all the dangers that come along with it. You know, they enjoy life. You know, they love their parents, they love their friends, they love their toys. It's all innocent to them. There's no, nothing in the world that's actually tainted to them. They don't see all the badness, they see the good in it. You know, we as adults, we start to see the the bad instead of the good. But you see, that's what Jesus was talking about. Unless we become like children, or we start seeing the good, we start seeing the, the people for, for what God, how God sees them. Amen. And that's, you know, we have to become that innocent, childlike faith. And see, a child is also fully dependent on its parents. You see, when the world had a problem, God sent 
a baby. A baby. Dependent on its mama and its daddy. When Jesus grew older, he got out to the ministry. He was still dependent on all those around him. Because Jesus was homeless. Didn't have a, a physical home. He lived and allowed people to take care of him. He's still living the life of a servant. Show an example that we have to be dependent upon God. As babies are fully dependent upon their parents, we too have to be 100% dependent upon God and surrender to Him. So we have to become innocent. The, a child is carefree. When you think about it, they, they have that carefree attitude because they don't have bills. They don't have to worry about stuff like that. They endure so a lot in life is just to have fun and enjoy life. You know, they have that, that purity about them. Their faith is pure. There's no blemish on their faith. And they see God for who He truly is. And they love Him unconditionally. You see, when a child comes to hear about God in Sunday school and hears the stories of the Bible, they truly understand it. They understand it in a way as adults never will because we have lost that childlike faith. They truly understand it for what it is. It's that joy, that purity. They see God as a parent. Not as a deity or an omnipresent entity. They see him as a loving father. You know, that's where that childlike faith comes in, that carefree belief in something. You know, especially when they, Christmas time comes along and they see a present from Santa. They're so happy, their eyes light up, they're, they're tickled to death. It's the same thing when you introduce a child to God. Their eyes glow. As we get older, we lose that glow. But you see, it's also something new to them. Because up until they get to the point to where they can ride a bike that has train wheels, you know, they've been doing what? Crawling around, walking. Maybe you get on a tricycle if they had a tricycle. And, but then they get to a bike. But what does a bike do? It gives them the ability to go different places. They can go a little bit more. They go a little bit faster. It's new. It, show, it gives them a new way of enjoying their life and having fun. Because remember, a child's lot in life is just to have fun. Enjoy himself or herself. Have fun with their family, their animals, their toys, whatever it may be. Their job is just to have fun. And so when you, they get the bike for the first time and they start riding it, it shows them something new. It's just like showing them the love of God for the first time, that joy that it gives them and happiness. You see, when a child, a child just wants to be loved. That's the main thing. It just wants to be loved by his, his or her parents. And when you tell a child that there's someone else out there that loves them more than their parents do, their eyes light up. Because God has the unconditional love for them. A love that sees no right or wrong. A love that loves them no matter what they do. You know, it gives them that joy and that happiness. Because a child... His most important thing is to be loved. It is. As adults, you know, we sometimes forget that. Our most important thing is just to be loved. And we want to be loved, but we've grown callous to a lot of things that has prohibited us from being loved because we try to block and protect ourselves. Like I said several times, you know, kids like to have fun. And it's much like when we first become saved. We are new. Our past has forgiven us. It's giving us a, a glimpse of a better future. You know, when we become saved, we now say, okay, everything I did back here is forgiven, right? Yes. So no matter how bad my past is, God says I have forgiven it. Amen. My son has paid the sin, the, the ransom for your sin. Your past is in the past. You see, God has one ability that man will never have. 
he has the ability to forget. You see, when those sins are covered by the blood and they're washed by the blood, God forgets them. We can't, we can't fathom that just because we remember that God can forget them. It's like, we can't move past that. Because we don't forget unless our memory goes and then we start forgetting a lot of things. But you see, our past is forgiven so that gives us a glimpse of a better future because we're no longer bound by that past. And that's the thing, as a child, they don't look at a past, they don't look at a future, they live in the moment. They live for that day, that moment, that second. Whatever they're doing at that moment in time, they're trying to have fun. That's how we have to be. Quit planning five years down the road. We might not be in five, here in five hours. Amen. We got to learn to live in the moment. Tell your family you love them all the time before they leave. Hug your kids. Hug your wife, your husband. Tell them all you love them because you don't know what the next hour holds. You see, kids, they'll come and tell you, Mama, I love you, Daddy, I love you, just randomly. That's that childlike innocence. Safe. The trainer wheels gives them a sense of safety. Why? Because what is it doing? It's providing balance for them. They know they're not going to fall over once them train, as long as the train wheels are on there. They're not going to fall over. Well, you know, we as adults, we think we know it all. We've been through it all. We got this. We, we don't need it. But sometimes we need to put the training wheels back on. Amen. We need to put the training wheels back on and let God take care of us. Because some, when we go off on our own, we lose our balance. We start swerving in the wrong way. We start following. Because we don't have that training wheel to protect us. So those training wheels give them a sense of safety. Now, we move into the bicycle era. When we look in 2 Timothy 1, 7, it says, For God gave us a spirit of, not of fear, but of power and love and sound mind, sound control. It also says in Matthew, Teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and behold, I am with you always, even unto the end of the age. And then we see in Isaiah 41, 13, For I, the Lord your God, hold your right hand. It is I who say, unto, say to you, Fear not, I am the one who helps you. Amen. We have now taken the training wheels off. You know, we're scared. We're nervous. We're fearful. Eventually, we get the accomplishment, fitness of accomplishment, but in the very beginning, come on, y'all, when a child takes the training result for the first time, they are terrified. Why? Because they don't know what's going to happen now. They can't, they don't understand balance without the training wheels. They got to learn balance. They got to learn control. They got to learn steering all over again. They have to learn how to pedal and keep up with it. All this takes into place. You see, because they're scared they're going to fall over. Because they don't have that. You know, this is us. When we take the training ones off and we move to the bike stage, we're scared. This is us when we try to do God's work on our own. Amen. When we try to go and run God's kingdom and God's house on our own without God in it, we become scared, nervous. Oh, we're going to fall. Guess what? We're going to fall. <clears throat> now we have fallen over on the bike. Because you know as soon as you let that kid go, they want to go a few feet, then they're going to fall over. They haven't grasped the concept of putting a foot down to hold them up. They're going to fall over. So now they fell over. How quick are they going to get back on the bike? Some still have problems getting back on the bike. But it's okay. 
you know, when we fall over, we get scared, we get nervous. We look at that bike now as a source of torment because I just fell off of that bike and I scraped my knee and my elbow and it hurts. And mommy's not kissing it to make it better. She's telling me to get back on and go. So you see, we're going to fail in our faith. We're going to fall in our faith. We're going to get hurt. Because how many people in this world love Christians? Not many. So we're going to get hurt. But no matter what, no matter how nervous, God tells us to fear not. He said, fear not. I am with you. Always, even until the end of the age, I am with you. Fear not. And it also says, I did not give you a spirit of fear. So God didn't give us a spirit of fear. Where is it coming from? <laughs> you know, think about it. So the child falls off the bike. They're scared to get back on. They're nervous. And they're fearful of it because now they're moving down and they're riding it. And if you watch their hands, their little arms are just shaking and nervous. They're all over the place trying to keep control of it. So the whole while, until they get their legs on them, they're, they're still nervous. They're scared they're going to fall again. They're fearful of the bike now. They're fearful. And you see, when we've been hurt too many times, we are fearful to put ourselves back out there. We're scared to go back down that road again. And God, I, I, I don't want to. I don't want to. You know? And that's how sometimes we become. We become fearful of going, of putting ourselves out there. Fearful of standing in for our faith. And so when we look at that, we, we must realize that God has not given us that spirit of fear and that he's always going to be with us again. We've got to keep reminding ourselves that. Remind ourselves that God's with us. Yeah, it says, if I am with you, who's against you? If God is for us, who can be against us? Think about it. Remember, our past is forgiven and forgotten. God already knows our future, and he promised to be with us until the end of the age. But that natural human side of us feared. That fear that we let take over. It's kind of like that, that fear factor. It's the thing that we cannot control. We don't know how it works in our life. We just know it happens. It's like me when I see a snake for the first time that just pops up on me. That fear rushes over me until I kill it. Then I feel better. But you see a child when they're on that bike for the first time, that fear rushes over them until they get their legs under them. And now that they're riding it, they're, they're riding and they're riding it and they feel that accomplishment. They're moving. They got everything under control. Now they can turn, they can go places. You know, once we finally get our, our foot in underneath them, we get daring, we try to pop wheelies now, we try to jump ramps. We're all good, we get bold. You see, then we become, dang, we become daring. We get bold on the bike, we jump ramps, we go through ditches, we pop wheelies, we do all these things, we're sliding our back tires around. We get bold and we're daring, and guess what? We become dangerous. Well, how do we become dangerous? Well, I'm gonna show you right here. It tells us, I want us to show the boldness of faith. To me, the biggest scripture in the Bible that talks about boldness was Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego when they answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from this burning fire in front of us, and he will deliver us out of thy hand. O king, but if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Think about it. That was boldness. They stood up to a king and said, I don't care what happens to me. God's either going to save me or he's going to bring me home. One of the two, it's a win-win situation for me regardless, but I will not bow down to your 
golden image. That's that boldness in faith, that daringness in faith to stand up to a king. But you see, somewhere through the line, we kind of become prideful. And we see in Samuel, it says, Talk no more so exceedingly proudly. Let not arrogance come out of your mouth. For the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. You see, we understand that our actions speak more than our words. God looks at our actions as well as our hearts. And as far as he's the only one that can weigh our actions. So are we bold in our faith? Or have we become the know-it-all in our faith? You see, when we, how do we become dangerous? We feel like we now know it all. We have upgraded to the four wheeler stage where we're on four wheels. We're not going to fall over as easy. Uh, you can still flip them things, trust me. You can still roll them over, there, but not as easy. And the thing is, we feel safe. We feel like we know it all, and then we become dangerous. But first, let's look at boldness. You see, when we first upgrade from the bike, we're still bold from the bike. So we go to the, the four-wheeler. We still got that bold faith in us. You know, that faith like you're going to take the four-wheeler out for the first time in the woods and just open it up. And just, just go wide open. And you get that sense of adrenaline. It's great. You know, this is good when we're bold in our faith. This is where God wants us to be, to be bold. Like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He wants us to be bold in our faith. To stand up to anything because He know, because we know no matter what, God is going to be with us. He's either going to save us or bring us home. This is where we need to be in our faith. Bold, but with the, still the protection of the training wheels. Because God has the, has to, we have to depend upon Him. We have to become dependent upon him. But we see we become daring. And this is where we fully grasp the verse of Philippians 4.13 that says, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Think about it. We fully accept that verse. And we live that verse by faith. We move through our faith by that verse because now we know God is with us. We can do anything and we're going to try to do all God calls us to do with no fear. Because why? We now understand the concept of fear not and I can do all things and He is with us always. We have embraced these concepts this is where we belong in, the, in this part of our life, right here in the, in the four-wheeler stage where we're bold and we're daring and we're safer because we got four wheels, we're more stable. This is the stage we want to be at because it's in that bold, that daring, and that stable stage in life that keeps us where God wants us. He keeps us steady. But yet, we're still bold. He wants us to be that, that boldness. You know, what did he say when he told Peter? On this rock, I plant my church. On this rock, I build my church. The rock. God wants us to be the rock for him. He wants us to be that steady, strong warrior faith that he needs us to be. But what happens? We know it all now. We've got it all under control. We know all the concepts of what we need to do to live in our faith, the boldness in our faith. And guess what? We start to become the teenager. We know it all. We feel like we know everything. Nobody can tell us anything. And that we've had the answers to the universe in our head. We got it. I mean, seriously, we feel like we can answer the universal questions. But you see, this is where we become really dangerous. We start to put God on the back seat. 
You see, up until this point, God's still steering our lives, still steering our faith. He's in control. Now we have taken the reins. We have moved God to the back seat of the four wheeler, and He's just riding shotgun. We don't feel like we need Him anymore. Because we've been through so much. We feel like we've been seasoned in our faith. We've been tested. We've been tried. We've been through a lot of things. We've fallen. We've got back up. We've conquered the fear. We got this. This is where we become dangerous. Because now we start trying to live God our lives our way. Instead of God's way. You know, this is where it happens. When we allow pride and arrogance to take over. You see it also tells us. In Proverbs 18.9. Whoever is slack in his work. Is a brother. To him who destroys. And it also says. The desire of the slugger kills him. For his hand refuses to labor. You see we now. Going into the motorcycle stage. And a lot of people say this is the most scariest stage of them all. Yes and no. The motorcycle stage, you're aware of all the dangers. You see them all day long, but you just pass on by and cruise through life. We're cruising now. We're living our lives, cruising the open road of our faith. Just enjoying the view as we pass by. Not stopping to help. <laughs> See? How many people passed by before the Good Samaritan stopped to help? How many religious people passed him by before someone stopped to help? You see, we're aware of dangers in our lives at this point. We see everything that has come our way. We understand everything that has been thrown at us. But you know what? We're too busy. We're too busy living our life. Our way. Doing what we want to do. When we put God in that back seat. In the saddlebags and only open it up when we need him. It's like that suitcase. We only put God in a suitcase, throw him in the closet, and only take him out when we need him. You know, we enjoy our freedom. We're free. We don't have a, we don't have a, we're back to that carefree stage. We feel like we don't have a care in the world now. Because why? We know it all. We're just cruising by. Not going to put ourselves out there. We're not going to do anything that's going to cause us to overexert ourselves in our faith. We're just going to sit back and watch the world go by. And let someone else take care of it. You see, this is when, like I said, we've reached a point where we're being dangerous in our faith. We're not helping anybody. We're not doing what God called us to do. And this causes us to become lazy. Am I saying you're lazy in your life? No, I'm not saying you're lazy in your life. But I'm saying we get to this stage in our faith where we just become stagnant. We just set it on cruise control and just cruise and we become lazy. We but we don't care. That's the pastor's job. We are just going to cruise on by and ride while everyone else does the work for the church. And you see what's funny is half the time we will pass by those in need and not even think twice to stop and help them and then turn left into the parking lot of the church. Am I right? Am I wrong? Think about it. How many people do we pass that we know are in need on our way to church? We pass on by. Don't even think twice about it. Oh, I gotta go to church. Gotta get to church. Gotta get there on time. Gotta be on time. The preacher's gonna get me if I'm late. We pass on by. And don't even tell those in need. Why? Because we don't want to overjoy ourselves. 
But we're going to come to church and worship God because why? Guess what? We're church leaders at this point. We're high people in the, in the church at this point because of our faith. You know, but we still want to enjoy riding on the coats of others and letting them do all the work for us. We take the credit. We don't want to exert ourselves anymore. You know, we, we've graduated from this stage. It's time for someone else to do it. We're old. We're not like that anymore. We don't, we can't do this. But you see, guess what? At this point is where we have become a false prophet. What is a false prophet? Someone that's going to preach something to you, but turn around and do the total opposite in your life. Think about it. You know, I've had to struggle with my past and until I finally closed that chapter of my life, I was able to move past it. It's not easy to close that chapter in your life, but you've got to understand there has to come a time where you have to realize that we are just riding through life on cruise control and we're not doing anything to help anyone but ourselves. You see, we're not listening to God's call. God calls us to do something, we say, not now. But let me tell you this. God will find another. Amen. There will come a time when you will not hear the knocking on your heart. God will say enough. He will find another. Because you're just cruising on by. Yes, you're saved. Yes, you're going to go to heaven. But you're just going to cruise on by through life. And you're going to get to heaven by the skin of your teeth. And when you get to heaven, there'll be a room with a door. And you'll see one little trophy in there. You're thinking, what is that? Well, that's all the rewards you got. Then there'll be a room over here, I believe, that'll be just chock or block full of all kinds of rewards if we had listened to God and did what God told us to do. This is what you could have had if you listened to me and you stayed in the bold and daring, safe in your faith. If you had just let me continue to drive, this is what you could have had. But no, this is what you have now. Because you put me in the back seat and you thought you were the pilot. That's what happens when we become dangerous. Because I'm telling you, if you don't believe me, remember what Job 121 says. Naked I came from my mother's womb and naked shall I return there. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. In less than 24 hours, Job lost his entire herd of animals, his property, his kids. He lost everything in under 24 hours. Everything. Most men would just turn around and just either take their own lives or just go on a killing spree these days if that happened. But Job said, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. What happened? Job's life was multiplied. Multiplied after all of that. It was all given back to him. He had more children. And he still had children in heaven. He had more animals, more land, more money. Because he stayed faithful to God throughout that time. But you see, our life is like this roller coaster I'll show you right here. One minute we're innocent with no care in the world. And then we get a taste of freedom. We become bold in our faith, ready to conquer the world until the ups, downs, and twists and turns of life come around. It causes us to become not so bold, but just cruising in our life. Just cruising through life in our faith. You see, 
Remember when we fell off the bike, how hard it was to get back on. We've fallen off the bikes. We still remember that hurt, but we're instead of getting back on and becoming bold and daring, we would rather just cruise easily through life because we don't have to worry about falling anymore. You know, it's time for us to put the training wheels back on. You know, sometimes we have to remember where we came from to understand where we need to go. Those training wheels reminds us of that innocence we had in our faith at one time, that innocence, that purity that was in our faith. What happened to that? What happened to the training wheels? What happened to that innocent faith? See, God's still there. God hasn't changed. We changed. We grew up and figured we know it all. Let me tell you something. The oldest man in the Bible, Methuselah, a little be 969 years old, I believe it is, still did not know it all. Still did not know it all. And he was the oldest man of all. What makes us think we know it all? What makes us think we know God? You know? Where are you at today in your progression of faith? The stages of the training wheels, the scariness of the bike, the bold and daring of the four-wheeler, or just a cruising along with the motorcycle. Where are we at in our faith today? You see, God wants us to be here, steady like a rock, bold and daring. He has us. He upholds us by his right hand and tells us to fear not. He wants us to be here with the innocence of there. Amen. You see, we have to be bold and daring. That childlike faith. Remember, Jesus said, unless you become like a child, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. What does that mean? We must be born again. When he told Nicodemus this, Nicodemus was the righteous man. He said, am I to crawl to my mother's womb and be born again? He said, no. You must become like a child. Innocent. Pure and believe a child will believe just about anything he or she is told from his parents why because he trusts his parents wholeheartedly they love their parents but you see we have to believe we have to become the rock but pure and innocent where are we at today Are we enjoying cruise control? Because I can tell you, there are not many people out there that are bold in their faith today. You know how I know? Because you don't hear about them. Why? Because we're enjoying living our life on cruise control in the shadows. We don't like to get out and be daring anymore. Why? Because we're scared we're going to offend someone. Who cares? If I offend you, guess what? Get over it. I'm not here to make you happy. My job is not here to give you a feel-good message that you can feel all warm and fuzzy about inside. My job is to hurt your feelings, stomp on your toes, and have God convict your soul of what is wrong in your life and in mine. Because when I am preaching this message, I'm not preaching to y'all. I am preaching to me. This message is all for me. Just as it should be all for you. Because God is not here to make us feel good about ourselves. We have to come back to the boldness in our life. And guess what? It is not easy. 
It is not easy to stand up and tell your life to people that you have never done before. They hear things that come out of your mouth that the things you did in your life, they're just like, wow. It's not easy to be that person. But you have to do that to get past your past and become bold again. You have to let it go. If God forgot it, why in the world are we still holding on to it? Amen. Yes, we have fallen. We've got the bruises, the scrapes, the bumps to prove it. The scars in the heart, the emotional heart. But you know what? None of that compares to what Christ did for us. None of it. You read the story of Paul and all that he went through. And he says, I boast not. We cannot become prideful and arrogant in our faith because it is going to lead us to a life of destruction. It is going to turn us into a lazy sloth. We have to become bold again. It is our turn to take a stand and be bold again. We may be small, but let me tell you something. God changed the world with 12. Jesus changed the world with 12, and actually only 11 of them truly believed. He changed the world with rejects from society, fishermen, and just ordinary people. So they had no money, and no homes, and no vehicles. All they had was what they had on their body at the time and their sandals. And he changed the world with 12. What's our excuse? Let us stand. Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for your message. Lord, Father, I pray that there's anyone out there right now that needs to hear, that needs to turn to you, Father, that you'll give them the boldness to just to let go. And to step forward out of faith and just to turn it all over to you, Father. To help them fully surrender to you, Lord, because only can, upon surrender to you, can they truly live their life the way that you had them to live it. So, Father, just today I pray that you just be with them. Give them the courage to step out. As Mom plays a couple hymns of invitation, the altars are open if you need to come and pray. 